all set okay thank you sir i welcome uh, dr jagadish sandarbhos uh, rajendran for um, uh, this uh, evening session um, and also i welcome uh, professor pragasam dean school of uh, bioscience bioscience and uh, Techno uh, technology sbst vat uh, for sharing this session now the session is over to chairperson thank you sir yeah, yeah. thanks dr lognathan uh, so for today's uh, uh, meeting so we have dr uh, uh, jagadish sandra bose so um, so now uh, right now uh, dr jagadish is a postdoc at uh, masonic medical research institute new york so he has done as uh, two postdoctoral ship at uh, 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 stanford university school of medicine usa and then uh, uh, ut uh, southwestern medical center texas usa he obtained his uh, phd uh, from advanced Med biomaterials and stem cell engineering lab changang uh, university south korea his research include uh, nanotechnology biomaterials cancer biology gene and cell therapy molecular imaging and the biopharmaceuticals so he has several publication uh, with i impact journals and is also as reviewer for various uh, scientific journals so over to dr jagdish so we'll take all the the queries from the chat box and then uh, so we'll share it to dr jagdish for this uh, uh, discussion so over to dr jagdish yeah um good morning everyone uh, i think it's a good evening to everyone in india um yeah today i'm going to talk about the cell mimetics um which is a uh, brand new i think the recent decades um most of researchers are started working on this area um jagadish can, can you please share your uh, screen again okay sorry just a minute yeah yeah, yeah. thank you yeah uh, yeah uh, i'm going to talk about the cell mimetics uh, because this is the recent uh, nano engineering strategy which make uh, the nano carrier more uh, you know decorated as a targeted one uh, i'm going to uh, give much more examples of our own uh, lab one and um, others also yes um as you know this um commercial commercially there is a few polymeric nanoparticle nanoparticles are available uh, the best example is paclitaxel loaded um, you know the pet plga one that's uh, recently approved in korea but not in us other uh, things are you know the pet plga based psma targeted one uh, which is uh, developed by bind therapeutics but unfortunately you know uh, the clinical trial got failure and after there is a lot of things happen so the overall synthetic particles in 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 my research i majorly focus on polymeric nanoparticles uh, particularly plga so these nanoparticles has a synthetic surface particularly hydrophobic in nature so that's uh, mostly taken by the macrophages are um, you know reticular endothelial systems in the body so that eliminate the particles rapidly so it shows you know a short circulation time in the in vivo as well as it has a poor uh, in vivo uh, in vitro transfections also so that was my first question a uh, research question i tried to answer uh, during my phd so i started working on uh, this cell mimetics area so um, as i said these particles are, has a synthetic surface and burst relays and it tend to provoke immune reactions and and so on but when we modify this surface with the cell mimetic one the reason i'm saying cell mimetic one is cell has a lipid bilayer structure and it has multiple proteins and you know the lipids uh, on the surface so researchers are it's not a new uh, researchers trying to mimic the cell surface Uh, almost two to three decades earlier, uh, the best example one is dark cell, which is clinically approved uh, liposome, pegylated liposome. The reason they have they included the peg is it it provides a steric hindrance. Uh, by that way, it will avoid the immune cell recognitions. So this is successfully launched and you know commercially available material. Based on this model, a lot of people are trying to engineer the nanoparticle surface. 
most of nanoparticles are uh, engineered with big based polymers but you know recently there is a report it's called accelerated blood clearance because when you take a first dose and followed by number of doses if you take the peg lipids which uh, stimulate uh, antibody reactions so that's why our researchers are trying to find alternative surface modification or nano engineering strategies so in my research uh, around 2013 i started this uh, i tried to uh, investigate lot of lipids for this, this for the surface based modification the one is uh, dutap uh, which is cationic lipid and phosphatidyl choline and phosphoethanolamine peg based one so my my synthesis pattern is simple and it's just like a self assemble method and i also started to investigate a natural cell membrane to coat on the nanoparticle surface in 2013 I know the other professor who started 2011 this same research I followed him and I inspired him based on his research then I started my work so we did a lot of uh, you know literatures and extensive studies and we used a lot of lipids uh, for the surface engineering and we published all these things uh, as a review as well as research so if anybody interested you can you know read these papers and you can get thorough knowledge on this so we can use lot of lipids to modify the surface and depends on the you know the synthesis methods the surface modification will be different so here um, just a minute i yeah so here i i showed the cell membrane one because these cell membranes can provide extended circulation i will explain why it's provided extended circulation and natural targeting and as well as it can be used to avoid immune cell recognition and we can use the same technology for cancer immunotherapy instead of this we can modify with you know the cationic lipid i'm going to explain those uh, things also uh, which can be used to encapsulate nucleic acid this is very important in current scenario in particularly the corona vaccine development area because i do have experience in vaccine development te- technology and i also talk to, to some of the uh, top researchers in india who's working um various vaccine formulation so you know the finding a adjuvant is very a difficult task in 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 particular this viral vaccine uh, there is uh, one uh, company now the moderna vaccine they are using mrna based vaccine technology and in particular they are using lipid nanoparticle based system to deliver that particular vaccine candidate so i'm going to explain those things also and after that as i said the peg lipid which enhances the circulation and all other factors yeah when i started my first research um in korea that's uh, around 2013 we come up with ideas like how this protamine protamine is a cationic peptide which has a lot of arginine amino acid sequence which provide more cationic charge on this molecule it generally um it, you know in, in not only human um, and in, it's like salmon also these proteins are you know making dna condensation and by that way it's packed in the sperms and it's you know transfer to various um, generations so i used i i mimic those things and i incorporated the protein into my nanoparticle synthesis so by that way we we can pack the dna on the surface of the nanoparticle and we can deliver this dna to the cells this is a preliminary investigation so, so uh, i i i have a plan to further continue this work but but not with the dutap with the different lipids and lot of companies also currently working on this area and we did uh, this investigations uh, and here i can show this particle characterizations by sim and you know uh, like confocal microscopy and we also evaluated this in different cancers uh, transfection efficiency you can see this like hela and hackat and hg2 uh, we mainly develop this technology for stem cell transfection because transfecting stem cells is highly difficult one unfortunately this technology is not worked for stem cells uh, we are you know we have been working uh, still and the same thing uh, we used different lipids to engineer the plg nanoparticles like um do tab and phosphatidyl choline and we investigated uh, to deliver this surface engineered particle to intracellular antibiotic delivery for a, for example here the staphylococcus what it it used to do it it used to um 
use the macrophages as a host and it survived for a long time. I will explain later this part because we did um, another good work and we also published that work in uh, ACS Nano. So I'm going to explain that in a later slide. So we uh, examined these surface engineered particles here to deliver the vancomycin, uh, the antibiotic to intracellularly. We, char we characterized uh, using, you know, the term. And you can see uh, these are the, the green ones are intracellularly um, infected bacteria which survive, which means it's a live bacteria and the macrophages. And this is the Staphylococcus aureus one. Most of people are aware about the Staphylococcus aureus um, antibiotic resistance causing bacteria. Because most of these works are, I collaborated with my friend uh, Micro Nagu, who's um, currently postdoc at Brown University, so who helped me to develop all these uh, investigations. And I, as I said, uh, we can modify the surface with the synthetic lipids and we can investigate to deliver the drug, particularly intracellularly, or we can deliver the genes uh, to the cells, or we can use this um, cell membranes to mimic the, uh, you know, the source cell surface. So today talk, I'm much more fo focusing on this part rather than this part. So you know, in blood, there is a lot of cells. For example, these are non adherent cells, uh, examples, RBCs and white blood cells and so on. So each cell has its unique surface proteomics. By that way, it function as a unique thing. Uh, for example, red blood cells can circulate up to 120 days in the blood, but the WBC cells, for example, the macrophages, which can, you know, migrate up tropism towards the disease, particularly inflammatory disease or cancer and so on. So if we peel off this membrane and coat on the nanoparticle surface, we can get the same, um, you know, the properties, same or half of the functions of what the source cells is doing. So that's the overall concept of the cell mimicking nano carriers. So Around 2013, we started this work. A um, lot of people parallelly uh, investigated. Some people worked on red blood cells for long circulation of nanocarriers. Instead of phagylation, they used the RBC. Some people work on um, white blood cells, uh, which you know enhance the migration towards the cancer or inflammatory diseases and cardiac diseases. For example, if you use T cells, this is an emerging scenario. University of Pennsylvania people are using uh, these T cell based hypothesis to overcome, uh, you know, the CAR T cell therapies, the problems with the CAR T cell therapies and dendritic cells. Some people may aware that we can make artificial dendritic cells as a vaccine, which can be used not only for coronavirus, hepatitis B virus and uh, cancer and so on. And we can also peel the membranes of macrophages that uh, we can use for a lot of purpose, like macrophages used to you know, attack a lot of uh, pathogens, viruses, and so on. And the same pattern with the monocytes. And another interesting cell is platelets, because platelet has a lot of property. It can directly go and bind to the injured vascular tissue. Say, for example, atherosclerosis. It, it can be used for the treatment of atherosclerosis. And as well as it can be used to, to target the circulating bacteria. Say, for example, Staphylococcus aureus, uh, which generally causes sepsis and other things. So we can use this platelet coated particles to target certain bacteria. And everyone knows about the stem cells. You know, I don't want to talk much more on this area because uh, stem cells, long, long time people are investigating as a cell therapy in the clinics, particularly Korea and Japan is uh, far beyond. But there is a lot of issues. Some products got approval, some products are not. Particularly hematopoietic stem cells got approval and the IPSC is showing a lot of promise in the clinics. So my hypothesis is we can use these cells rather than as a cell therapy, we can use as a cell-free therapeutics rather than using the whole cell. We peel the membrane and coat the particles and we can use those as a cell mimicking particle and deliver the therapeutics in a controlled manner. The same pattern, we investigated cancer cells because cancer cells, people are thinking cancer cells are, you know, the oncogenic one, but that's the reason we can peel the cancer cell membrane because these cell membrane has a unique cell adhesive proteins which tend to bind to the same cell cancer. For example, if you peel the cell source of uh, triple negative breast cancer, then the, those nanoparticles 
goes and binds to the triple negative uh, breast cancer, not only the primary site, but also in the metastasis area. The same thing with the hep hepatic uh, hepatocellular carcinoma and, you know, the glioblastoma multiform and so on. So we did a lot of investigation on all these three uh, cancers, and I did one publication and another two are in row. And immune cells, as I discussed earlier, these cells are, you know, it's like a police. Um, it's always looking for a thief in the body. So we can use these cells to coat the particle and to deliver the therapeutics in a disease-specific or organ-specific manner. So uh, we did um, uh, some reviews on this, and you can read it, how we can prepare the particles, particularly this stem cell membrane coated or immune cell membrane coated. Generally, we separate the cells. We can culture the cells in the case of adherent cells. In the case of blood cells, we can separate it and coat the, separate the cell membranes and coat on the nanoparticle. For example, here I used PLGA. Some people used the silica, some people used gold nanoparticle, some people used iron oxide. So whatever your material of choice, you can coat the surface based on the surface property. Either it's charged or it is chemically conjugated. Then we can use either the physical extrusions or electrostatic interactions or chemical conjugation to coat the surface. Okay, these particles has multiple applications uh, uh, because all these things are currently in a preclinical investigations, not in a clinic. There is a one or two companies are currently investigating clinically. So these particle can escape from the immune cells and it has provide long circulations and it has a, you know, in, it can overcome the endothelial barriers and it can bind to the bacteria and it can be used to target the heart. Very few people know targeting heart is very, very difficult. One of my colleagues tried almost three years and he now he got a promising result. So targeting heart is it's very difficult part, particularly my lab currently in MMRI, we are doing these things, targeting heart and other areas. Um, so I'm, I can show those examples. Something struggling. Okay, yeah. Uh, one of uh, my example is, see, I published a paper uh, which we used the engineered stem cell membrane coated nanoparticles to deliver the BGF, uh, particularly to the to treat hind limb ischemia. So here what we used, we used adipose drive stem cells and we peel the membranes and we coat PLG nanoparticles, which is loaded with BGF. And you can see all the characterizations pattern and Uh, this is a um, nanoparticle tracking analysis. After this preparation, we did, uh, you know, this nanoparticle tracking analysis. And this is the overall schematic view. It shows, first we engineered the stem cells to express certain uh, proteins, say for example, CHCR4, uh, which provides a tropism to the stem cells. So we engineered those proteins on the surface and we peel the membrane and we coat these particles. And you can see after doing these things, it enhanced the homing capacity of this nanoparticle. This effect is collective because it, it's require not only EPR enhanced permeation retention as well as it also require the natural homing ability of um, stem cells. And we did the same thing with the cancer cells and we reviewed this in a, a recent uh, paper. And you can see because cancer cells has its uh, unique cell surface aggressive proteins, for, for example, adherins and immunoglobins, integrins, and so on. So each protein functions unique. Uh, for example, CD47, which present uh, on the, not only RBC surface, it also present on the cancer cells, which enhance the circulation, uh, which enhance its circulation. So, and it's also avoid the macrophages recognition. So we can use these cancer cells and coat the uh, nanoparticles to get uh, any of particular functions. So we use those technology to coat this gold iron oxide nanoparticle. It's a bimetallic nanoparticle. The reason we use it is we try to get multiple imaging modalities functions to this particular nanoparticle. For this reason, first what we did is, uh, this is a too complex study to explain, uh, you know, in a simple manner. We, we first loaded the, first we transfected 41 uh, breast tumor cells with microRNA, uh, in the case of antisense microRNA, then we isolated uh, extracellular vesicles from the uh, cells and we coat uh, these vesicles uh, on the surface of gold nanoparticle. Then after we injected into the mice and we see whether these 
nanoparticles are goes and home to the tumor you can see in the image here uh, you know on the day 1 and up to the day 8 uh, this 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 particles are start migrating towards the tumor and followed by this work we we also you know did another work uh, instead of using the extracellular vesicles we can use the apoptotic body this work uh, we are trying to pattern this work because this is a first work um, uh, we investigated other than you know no one sir uh, not try to even investigate this area because what we did is we isolated the apoptotic bodies particularly from cancer cells and we uh, reconstructed as a nano vesicles and we loaded the antibiotics within it and we delivered it so the background is um, as i said staphylococcus aureus is um, you know uh, it's it's um, it, it use the macrophages as a host and it can survive like a trojan horse so general vancomycin is the only available antibiotic to kill this particular bacteria but uh, the vancomycin cannot penetrate into the macrophages uh, there is a lot of drawbacks associated with the antibiotics and toxicity so to mitigate these issues we used the um, reconstructed apoc bodies uh, to deliver the vancomycin intracellularly particularly in the macrophages as well as in the cancer cells so here overall hypothesis is we culture the cells and collected the apoptotic bodies and we reconstructed by loading antibiotics then after we deliver into the macrophages we did lot of characterizations um uh, you know using tem and confocal microscopies and prosthetometries so i i'm skipping all these things we also did uh, proteomics you can read all these things in our published papers because uh, due to the time constraints i'm just moving forward and uh, to establish you know the intracellular infection model i took the help of um, dr macronaro and he developed this method so we first infected uh, macrophages and allowed the bacteria to survive intracellularly you can see this greens are bacteria are surviving intracellularly so this video shows uh, after our treatment how effectively uh, the drug is reached the intracellular and kill the bacteria and you can see this is a, a super resolution confocal microscopy which shows the dead bacteria within the cells and i also took another uh, post doc example post doc who supported me to uh, you know further investigate where exactly this bacteria are located within the cell and whether it is uh, uh, survived or it is dead after the treatment so you can see the red ones are dead one and the green ones are survived one and we also uh, used the same pattern and investigated first time in cancer cells because mostly uh in the case of glioblastoma multiform uh, the brain cancer patients they used to go to the hospital for the surgery because that's the most possible treatment they have other than very few drugs temozolomide the poor drug which is not highly effective so they must undergo a surgery when they go to the hospital they used to get hospital acquired infection of staphylococcus aureus um there is a lot of literature shows and we are the first one we showed that these bacteria can infect the cancer cells and survive within the cells so you can see these are you know the cell um, in vitro cell culture model we used the u87 gbm cells as well as ln229 cells and we treated with bacteria particularly staphylococcus aureus uh, msra and it survived intracellularly then after our uh, you know treatment some of bacteria get killed and you can see in the confocal microscopy so these are dead bacteria and these are the live bacteria one these these are you know the ln229 cells treated with staphylococcus aureus bacteria yeah we also did um, further biodistribution investigations we injected this uh, reconstructed apo bodies into the mice both immunogenic as well as nude mice models and you can see this mostly homing to the spleen as well as liver as these are you know uh, apoptotic bodies which has unique mechanism uh, to uh, can be recognized by the macrophages in the liver and spleen so we are investigating the studies further for other therapeutic possibilities so i don't want to discuss much more on this area 
we not only worked on the surface of uh, you know cell mimicking we also did a lot of core materials like uh, material chemistry um, so my colleague uh, dr uday kumar he helped me to develop bimetallic particles he also you know investigated the route of administration changing the route of administration we can reach most of uh, genes to the brain so that's his investigations and i just you know cooperated with him in this paper and we published this last year and we also um, along with um, you know my professor we last time um, we investigated a delivery of uh, genes um, particularly microRNAs to the hepatocellular carcinoma with the help of ultrasound and this uh, uh, you know the brain delivery images uh, if we deliver via nose uh, we can reach maximum amount to the brain tumor that was our uh, concluded results from our study and in the present lab at mmri uh, with the help of uh, professor jason mccarthy and uh, professor maria we are using um, you know human induced pluripotent system cells and we engineer these cells as well as we use the cell derived vesicles to coat the particles and we are investigating for the treatment as well as imaging of diverse uh, disease models uh in his lab i also develop uh, i also working uh, in the development of a lot of targeted nano diagnostics because these are not published results so i cannot dis- disclose all the things but we use a um, lot of technology like we have uh, customized dyes so we can you know use these uh, nano diagnostics to image various uh, cardiac disease models atherosclerosis and bone regenerations and so on uh i would like to highlight uh, other researchers works particularly this is the first work uh, in this area the cell mimetics area professor zhang lab he published in around 2011 so whom so ever is worked in this paper now they are um, pi in the in and around world so they what they did is they took the rbc cell membranes and coat the plg nano particles and they showed the coating this rbc pl uh, nano rbc membranes enhanced the blood circulation like of plg nano particles and followed by that work he also did another work he used the platelets to coat the uh, plg nano particles and he showed that coating platelets membrane can enhance the bacterial aggressions as well as uh, you know the vascular aggressions so there is a lot of works after that a lot of people are working on this area and recently he did um, another work this is um, he peeled um, neutrophil membranes and coat the nanoparticles and he up- employed these particles for the treatment of inflammation so uh, some people see you know recently it's very recent from john hopkins university what they tried is they not only uh, coat the surface they also change the shape to get a long circulation and uh, this another professor professor tasiuti from um, university of, i think the houston methodist uh, hospital so he developed this technology what he showed us he can coat the white blood cells membrane on the silica particle so by that way he enhanced the uh, nano particle migrations to the diseases like can not only cancer other inflammatory diseases so this is a recent work uh, the same work i did during my phd but uh, i unable to reach up to this level some people from uk southwest and what they did is they changed the different lipids and they showed if we change the lipid based the surface engineering we can change the organ based tropism because this is very important in present scenario uh, as of now very few meti- na- very few nano medicines are approved in the clinics and some materials are you know they use the viral vectors to deliver the genes and um, this study shows a lot of the uh, lot of promising uh, in the clinical translation of uh, gene therapy not only gene therapy and drug delivery so net take home messages we can take the nanoparticles like this guy and we can peel the uh, materials from any cells literally so it's like any shirt he can wear it or he can be a, you know any person or like rajinikanth he can be like one day shivaji or one day you know the like that one so this is a take home message so we can take any materials and we can modify the surface look like any other cells uh there is a 
lot of literatures you could find and you can use uh, you know any cells not only rbcs stem cells bacterium and you can use any material core to coat and generate new type of uh, cell mimetic particles and you can use these particles not only for diagnosis you can use also for therapeutics uh, the recent advancement and presently we are working uh, in this area of you know the nano engineering the advanced the nano engineering because not just to coating the particles we can you know mix two cells to acquire two functions for example if you want the particle to long circulate as well as it has to home to the cancer then you must fuse two two cells like rbc and cancer and there is a lot of scale of uh, studies also is going on as well as a lot of synthetic chemistry is incorporated on the surface like you can insert the lipids with the targeting peptide or targeting ligands or you can um, you know using uh, metabolomics to engineer the surface so finally i would like to thank uh, professor jason mccarthy and professor maria because these two people are currently encouraging me to work more on this engineered versions of cell membranes and professor ramasamy paul murugan who's uh, provided me the opportunity to work with stanford and uh, we have another two publications waiting with him and professor sam for uh, you know the excellent facilities in molecular imaging program as well as my uh, current uh, collaborators um, dr nagu dr jahu uh, and uh, you know dr sudhakar and uh, dr logu and my junior murugan overall um, you know my professors previous professors who gave the opportunity to pursue phd in korea with the help of uh, scholarship uh, which is sky scholarship professor sukhang lee and professor hansu park and uh, my colleagues uh, Dr. Khan and Dr. Muthu, who is currently in India. Thanks, everyone, for the for your participation. So wonderful, uh, Dr. Jagadish. So it's a really fantastic results. So you have and then you have shared. So there are a bunch of queries from the the audience. So the first query is from the. So what are the extra benefits are there of using an app? stem cell membrane for coating over the other cell membranes yes sir the stem cells you know um, people say if it's a kind term like stem cells means it's a one cell but if you go in depth uh, you can you know uh, study a lot like stem cells mesenchymal stem cells in mesenchymal stem cells there is a bone marrow origin there is adipose derived one a dental bulb derived one and so on so each cell as i said each cell has its unique proteomics so each cell functions as its uh, own based on the proteomics uh, based structures so in my case i used uh, adipose derived stem cells because the reason i used this adipose tissues are abandoned in our body so we can take out uh, from any patients uh, and we can use as autologous cell therapy or autologous cell free therapy but in the case of bone marrow one so are there any limitations of using uh, stem cells uh, yes sir there is a lot of things uh, particularly in us you know none of the cell therapeutics are but stem cell therapeutics are not approved but in japan and korea it got approved uh, very few products are um, reached to clinics the main reason is um, the cell associated toxicities are you know we cannot predict cell is it's like um, we are doing everything in an ex vivo environment but you know um, cells are uh, once we inject into the patients it will completely uh, behave differently the reason is you know the in vivo environment in the patients is completely different what we are providing in the ex vivo environment so whatever the but what, whatever we are feeding to the cells in the ex vivo it's not going to be the same in the in vivo that's the main reason that's the main disadvantage uh, currently and a um, lot of people are working to mitigate that in particular um, professor maria lab uh, here in mmri they are developing uh, ipsc based to work and um, in mmri they are, uh, they believe strongly they can promote uh, induced pluripotent system cell based materials to the clinic okay particularly so there is one other query from uh, the other participant so how do you decide the composition ratio of uh, various lipids for uh, functionalization for yeah. designing uh, those drugs for a specific cells how do you really optimize the process 
It's it's actually uh, as I said, the work is started 2011. Now we are in 2020. So I can provide a lot of literature if they contact me or you can forward me the questions. Um, the professors in uh, university, uh, the Houston Methodist uh, Institute, what he did is he collect the cells, cell membrane lipids, and he also used the synthetic lipids like phosphatidyl choline, and he fused together and he extruded and he get a new a brand new artificial synthetic vesicles. So a lot of people are doing, even I'm doing a lot of um, this kind of artificial synthetic or hybrid uh, nano vesicles. So there is a lot of literatures as well as we can do the same, uh, our own study. We can peel off the cell membrane and quantify uh, which lipid is uh, majorly present. For example, mostly cells are made up of, cell membranes are made up of phosphatidyl choline and phosphoethanolamines and the phosphatidyl serine, which will be located on the inner leaflet. In the in our case, apoptopic membranes, it will be turned outside to the cell membranes. So using HPLC and other techniques, we can quantify it in LCMS. We can quantify the number of uh, lipids and the particular lipids present on the surface. Okay. So there is one other query. So what is the molecular mechanism of hemoglobin addition occurring in case of nanoparticle biofunctionalities? With the cancer cell membrane, hemoglobin addition. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not... hemoglobin addition during in the case of uh, uh, nanoparticle bifunctionalized bifunctionalized with the cancer cell membrane. Uh, uh, I'm not clearly get it from this questions because the hemoglobins, which are uh, usually in the RBCs, uh, red blood cells. Um, in the case of, um, I think it's so when they use on a bifunctionalized materials, so they are really adhering on the, the RBC. Yes, the hemoglobin as a, you know the a material to biofunctionalize the nanoparticles. Uh, it's it's a it's I think interesting thought, but um, uh, I do not have any idea of using of hemoglobin on the surface of. Uh, okay, so there is one other query from the the participant. Is it possible to prepare surface PLGA nanoparticle? That can deliver both SIR and a drug at the same time. Yeah, we did uh, we did these things uh, early, and so many people said it early. Uh, you can deliver so many things like not only SIR and a drug, and you can deliver uh, INS and nanoparticle also uh, in concurrent manner. But the major problem is you know everyone's deliver a lot of things. I can make a nanoparticles loaded with five drugs. But the major issue is loading efficiency, loading percentage. Uh, my my professors knows and a lot of people knows those people are trying to push the nanoparticles to the clinic. Loading efficiency is very big problem because PLG nano, say for example, PLG nanoparticles are hydrophobic uh, in nature, and a lot of people are they. What they showed in their uh, paper, you know, they they showed a lot of uh, loading efficiency, the higher loading efficiency with hydrophilic drugs. It's completely contrast uh, statement. So as he said, for example, microRNAs or RNAs, those are hydrophilic molecules. So we can reach certain level of loading efficiency. And uh, Professor Ramaswamy Paul Murugan, as well as uh, Jason McCarthy, both are working uh, to enhance the loading efficiency using a lot of cationic peptides in case of um, I, I cannot disclose those things. So we can incorporate, we can enhance the loading efficiency. That's the key thing. Uh, say for example, the Moderna vaccine, which I talked earlier. So there is a one technology, platform technology that's called lipid nanoparticles, lipoparticles. So invented by some other group. Now that uh, that technology, platform technology is used for a lot of vaccine development, not only just a Corona. But in the case of Corona, they got a huge, uh, you know, interest on particular platform. Everything is the cationic material that should be able to incorporate a lot of um, hydrophilic material. In the case of uh, Corona vaccine, they used mRNA. It's a hydrophilic material. Okay. So there is one other query from one other participant. So does anyone have used the extracellular vesicle plasma membrane composition to coat the surface of nanoparticle? Uh, as of now, I think no one's used it. Yeah, no one's are used it. But maybe he may try that. Uh, everybody's, okay. you know, we can try a lot of things. Uh, investigations, anybody can do, uh, you know, this is a new uh, directions. 
the person whom so ever is asked but the problem is money constraint funding availability and all other things yeah obviously <laughs> so that's the main thing uh, that, that's the interesting question he can try that uh, you know fusing uh, extracellular vesicles and uh, some other plasma membrane but he should uh, he should be aware that what is the advantage of uh, mixing both the membranes and what he is aiming to achieve out of that uh, mixing both membranes so fantastic fantastic dr jagadish it said was wonderful lecture to listen so it's over to the, now the session is over to dr loganathan okay thank you uh, professor prakash for coming forward to chair this session i know Thanks, you today and i miss that you have taken this thank you very much i have few questions for jagdish jagdish first of all i would like to congratulate for your work very exciting that you are mimicking the cell surfaces and to deliver uh, to mimic the nature and to try to do this uh, is it possible to develop a kind of a mimicking surface on an implant uh, can you mimic this kind of thing on an a metallic or polymer implant so that the host or the human body can recognize that as an yes yes madam uh, it's it's a very interesting question thanks thank you so much for this particular question uh, there is a uh, one literature which published around 2016 or 17 i forget uh, what the people did is even um, i think dr smith kumar also showed so people uh, you know peel the platelet membranes and coat the surface even he did uh, you know the exosomes on so it's you can coat the uh, implant surface particularly the devices and bio implant prosthetics we can coat it even um, i tried this method in korea uh, around 2016 uh, this is somewhat contrast products the breast implant one uh, uh, in currently people are you know um, using siliconized uh, breast implant where uh, the fibrosis is a common issue so we try to coat the uh, uh, implant uh, with the immune cell membranes so by that way we can mitigate it actually that professor is investigating professor hansu park is investigating that currently yeah because in india infection is a great problem especially for cancer patients when they go with implants or some implants. yeah that is a phase yes um to be precisely answer to this questions because as i i my background is basically pharmacy and i did a few studies uh, in clinical background um, some area so i know the issues of um, you know catheter and other prosthetics so instead of you know coating uh, the whole cell membrane on some catheter surface the whole idea is you know this is a crude like we have a lot of mixtures mixture the proteins proteolipids vesicles instead of doing this now people are what they are trying to do is they are mimicking the surface first then after what is the key component is responsible for this uh, particular biological action say for example in rbc red blood cells cd47 is the major protein which um, help to circulate long time that's uh, some of the researchers are what they are doing is now instead of using the whole rbc they are just using cd47 peptide to coat the nanoparticle to extend the circulation uh it's a hard now but you know in future this will be like we can tailor the surface not only prosthetics we can tailor the surface of nanoparticle using like uh, designer molecules cd47 and cxcr4 and so on whatever we are required functions we can make that nanoparticle we can design the nanoparticle or uh, implants and we can use it in clinical yeah that will be great especially for erinia patients uh when they put an implant and there is a cancer with that then uh, they don't die because of cancer they die because of infections <laughs> so yes ma'am important to have this kind of strategy to combat infections thank you very much uh, like i think dr loganarayan can take over or dr sudhakar uh, thank you very much jagdish it, it was really a very wonderful presentation uh, uh, i can understand it's really hot time you know the early morning in usa Uh, thanks for joining us and uh, mm -hmm. i hope the participants also really enjoyed your presentation uh, okay. i think dr logo you can please uh, conclude the session i think dr logo okay anyway so uh, so once again on behalf of uh, organizing committee uh, swanzi university and vit I, uh, we would like to thank dr jagdishan uh, for his wonderful presentation and enlightening the participants thank you so much thank you so much sir bye
uh, the next session we have um, a concluding session that with, with a keynote speaker from dr professor webster from northeastern university boston at 8:30 pm please join our concluding session with a keynote speaker uh, at 8:30 pm all now we are closing the session now please rejoin at 8:30 pm thank you all thank you all